Well, you need to remember that early computers were storing games, programs, text files on cassette tapes, the same kind you use for music in those days. So sharing programs became very logic since you were already making mixtapes for friends for, with music, right? So you had the same media and you just copy programs the same way. And copy parties were where you'd rent a school or something like that over a weekend in summer when there was nobody there and you just invite everybody over the net, over whatever channels you had, to gather in one place over a weekend and copy all they could. So you'd like, everybody would bring their collection and you'd typically bring a number of blank discs, blank tapes, blank media, what have you, and come home with about, about three times as much as you went there with. You didn't do it online, but you met people you copied their data, they copied yours, and that's how data spread. And what kind of data was, was it? Games, mostly. was not so much video, music in those days. I mean, music started basically with the Fraunhofer MP3 codec in 1994, became 90, popular in 1995. So in those times was mostly games and a few text files. When the internet arrived, what mostly changed was that you didn't need your feed to move data on large scale any, on a large scale anymore. The only thing that really changed, I'd say, was the volume of it and was the availability of it. I mean, we'd always shared music. We'd always shared video when you had these clunky video cassettes, right? If you had two, if you had two video cassette recorders, it would copy and it would copy as soon as somebody wanted to copy copy things. I mean, it would be busy doing that. We've been sharing code, sharing insights, sharing games, sharing entertainment. This was a culture and it was the entire youth growing up with computers and the net that carried this culture. And so it was a culture clash between us and those who came before us who saw computers as something mystic, unnatural and almost a threat to society. So there was a growing frustration with how politicians demonized the entire first computer generation and then the next generation after that, the net generation. So in the uh, early 2000s, the, uh, this fight intensified after Napster had debuted in uh, 1999. And so it gradually moved into media where people sharing would argue with the corporate lobbies and what struck me was that everybody took part in this discussion except the politicians and that is exceedingly rare to see in society that everybody is discussing one and the same issue and politicians are not taking notice they're usually the first ones to sort of hmm, see where the wind is blowing so that set me thinking as in how can I get their attention? How can you sort of force them to take notice that this is actually important to a lot of people? And it struck me that the politicians aren't necessarily evil. They have their 24 hours a day and you just can't force them to take three weeks to understand a completely new perspective or a new lifestyle. You have to make it personal for you. You have to make it, you have to go outside of their nine to five daily job. And the way to make it personal for them was basically to say that, hey guys, you need to start listening to us or we are going to take your job from you. That worked. I mean, it worked wonders. I founded the Swedish Pirate Party on January 1st, 20, uh, 2006. And file sharing was an election issue of that year. Even though we didn't get into parliament, the final debate between the Prime Minister candidates was largely about file sharing. We put it so on the agenda, which was our goal at that point.